everybody we're back here in my Minnesota garden and it occurred to me that it's July 5th and you guys haven't seen a garden tour for a while so I thought we would come out and give you a quick garden tour and see what's going on in the garden but I thought I'd start actually on the outside of the garden because I think it's really important to plant pollinators to attract pollinating insects to your garden and so I do have a lot of flowers on the property and I actually started most of these flowers inside under the grow lights in about February so I didn't really spend a lot of money on these flowers but they're beautiful and they attract pollinators which is what we want to bring to the garden and we'll go in and we actually have added on to this garden this year pardon our mess we've been working out here um, we added um, a couple extra apple trees over here. I've got sweet potatoes growing in these pots. And they're doing really well. They're starting to take off. Um, gooseberries right there. Which are doing pretty well. There's actually some gooseberries on the vine. You'll be able to see them here. Oh yeah. There's quite a few on here. We do like to bring our rabbits out here at night and let them run around, but they've been eating some of the gooseberries. We added a sandbox for some of the smaller grandkids because when they're outside, I have to keep such a close eye on them. But with the sandbox out here, I can just close the gate and they can't go anywhere. So then I can work in the garden while they play. Over here, we've got some more uh, flowers that are just starting and some more sweet potatoes. And then we added pear trees this year. So there's a pear tree there, and there's its pollinator. Um, they didn't do anything this year. I really didn't expect them to because it's the first year in the ground, but hopefully next year. This is yesterberry. We just moved this big bush over here since we have the space now. And um, it's never really done anything because it's been crammed into a box, but this bush is actually pretty big. You probably can't tell how big it is from the video, but it's about three feet tall and about probably six feet around. So we're hoping now with some proper fertilizing and more space that maybe it'll start producing some berries for us next year. New to us this year is the garden tower. This thing is so cool. This is, um, I ordered it online. You can look it up for yourself and find it. But I've got dill on top and some some onions these were bunching onions actually that I had purchased at the grocery store and we cut them off and I just stuck the root end in and they're growing so it's free free onions and I did the same thing if I could find it oh, I might not be able to find it really quickly here for you but I did the same thing with a leek and that's in here as well oh it's right here it's not really doing too well I guess but I've got basil in here and I just I've got lettuce down here and I've got thyme and I pulled some stuff out of these empty spots because they bolted so I had spinach and radishes and stuff in here so I'll be replanting that and this is actually going to go in the house with me over the winter it's going to go in the garage under some grow lights and I'm going to grow stuff year round so it's pretty cool I'm pretty excited about that oh and you can compost there's a tube right here in the middle and you put compost in there and it feeds the tower so it's pretty cool. And then right here we've got the brassicas, the cabbage, broccoli, um, Brussels sprouts. Those are all in here. And on this side, I put um, an asparagus bed. And I knew that my asparagus, this is a brand new bed this year. I knew the asparagus wasn't going to do much and I wasn't going to be able to pick any. So I did throw my extra peppers in here. And they're doing pretty well. Over here... We've got pumpkins, and I actually have my first pumpkin growing. It's right there. I'm going to weed this out today, and we'll put some fertilizer in there and some worm castings and get that going. I know they're going to need a lot of feeding because they're getting a late start. Everything in this garden is getting a late start. We had a really cold May. We still had snow in May, and we had um, really cold, rainy temperatures in June, so it's just now warming up. We've had a couple of weeks in the 80s. So we're hoping for everything to kind of catch up. It's my onion box. It's doing pretty well. 
Over here I've got shallots, which I'm not really sure that I'm going to mess with again next year. They're kind of tedious. They're hard to keep weeded because they're so small. So I don't know if they're going to be worth the effort. And then here I did throw in a couple of yellow plum tomatoes and cherry tomatoes. Um, over here I've got, that's my state fair apple tree. And then I've got a couple cherry trees, which actually have some good cherries on them this year. Um, I've got a dwarf red duchess tree right there. She didn't do anything this year because I pruned the heck out of her. So maybe next year. In this box I've got blueberries. I've got three blueberry plants and two honeyberry plants. And I don't know if you can hear the loons, they're going crazy. And then um, this is where I took the yesterberry plant and the gooseberry plant out of this year. So I'll probably spread these blueberries out and give them a good dose of um, holly tone fertilizer and get them um, started good for next year. Right here is the garlic. This garlic is crazy. You can't tell from the video, but this is um, chest high. It's huge. This is my same garlic I've been planting for about four years. And so this is the massive garlic that I get every year. It's about the size of a baseball. And then on the other side of it is the smaller. This is a new variety I just planted this year. This is, I think it's Red Russian. And um, it needs to be weeded. But I'm going to be pulling all these out in about less than a week. So I didn't even bother weeding it. And then along the fence I have, these are the Mammoth King sunflowers, I believe, on this side. And on the other side of the steps is the, um, the, red, the red sunflowers I planted last year. Right here is this awesome trellis that my husband made out of exhaust pipe. He owns a repair shop, so he had access to exhaust pipe. And he made this trellis for me. Let me see if I can get back far enough here. Oh, for my grapevines to grow on. This is really, it's so cool. And I'm, this side, I don't know why this side does better than this side, but there's two grapevines on this side and there's two grapevines on this side. And you can see the difference. I don't know what it is, but they're crazy. And they're pretty packed. I don't know if I can get it. There's so many grapes in here. We'll have to do a video after harvest grapes so you can see just how many there are in there. It's pretty nuts. Right here is the beets. Right here is the strawberry bed. And my husband built this 2 by 4 frame and we put this hard mesh wiring across the bottom because the chipmunks were getting in here and eating all my strawberries. So, But I have about 11 cups of strawberries in the freezer so I can make jam when I get, uh, when I get a chance. Over here is, I got some radishes right here that I just threw in for the heck of it because this is a new box of blackberries and there, there's about six plants in here and I'm getting some berries on them. But um, I think in a year or two this box will be totally taken over by the blackberries just like my raspberries. So let's talk about the raspberries for a second. Um, this is six plants of raspberries that I put in this box and my husband had to build this 2 by 4 frame around it for me, this right here, to hold them in place because they were totally overflowing and I couldn't even walk through here because they're about 8 feet tall or 9 feet tall. They're just enormous. There's a couple of different varieties of raspberries in here. There's yellow golden raspberries and then there's um, red raspberries. But And they're loaded with raspberries and the bees are just buzzing in here. I've got some peas right here. They're just now starting even though it's after the 4th of July because like I said we had such cold weather but we should get a couple couple of good harvests out of that. And then we'll go up into the main garden here and then again there's pollinators. I've got um, wave petunias in here that I started from seed and they're they're growing here and there throughout the garden because I want those pollinators in here. We get up into the main garden and these are, this is the peppers. I've got two rows of peppers here. They're various kinds from jalapenos, habaneros, um, Carolina reaper, 
Um, I've got a chili pepper in here. And some other ones, jalapenos, um, banana peppers. I've got a bunch. I'm going to do an experiment, actually. I'm going to do this today. But I'm going to put worm castings on probably this side, right here. And I'm going to compare it, since they're side-by-side -side rows, and I'm going to see which ones. I'm going to just see how well the worm castings. I want to see what kind of an improvement it would be. There is one more grapevine over here, too, right there. That's finally, that's been there about five years and it's finally getting grapes on it. Right here we've got potatoes. And these are some massive, this is a massive row of potatoes. They're blossoming now, so that's good. Good healthy plants, no potato bugs, no insects. They're doing good. Right here is my beans and I've got about four or five plants here of the purple beans that I had left over from last year, so I threw them in the ground. And then the rest of this is the green beans and they're blossoming so probably in about a week we should be eating green beans right here's the carrots and they need to be weeded again but they're doing really well they're about I don't know seven or eight inches tall so I'm happy with those and there's a, a volunteer tomato plant right there but I just left it because it's not hurting anything there so I just left it alone um, then over here this is the squash bed so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got eight hills of butternut squash. So we should have plenty of butternut squash. And we put all this mulch down around it. I think this is going to be an experiment for me too this year. I'm going to put more, I'm going to bring in actually some more wood chips and put it in here. And I'm going to do an experiment in the next couple years with this section of garden and do a back to Eden section and just see how that does as far as, as um, keeping the weeds down and the growth and the fertilizing and stuff like that. So we'll have to do some more videos on that when I see you know how it does. And then over here, I have one sweet meat squash. And if you've watched any of the other videos, you would have seen the video from two years ago when our grandkids were here and we harvested the 22 pound sweet meat squash. So that I've got one of those here. I'll be adding some worm castings to that too today. And then I've got over here a Hubbard squash. And I gave these guys plenty of room because I want them to have enough room and fertilizer to really blossom out to what they need to, to produce those big fruits. Over here I planted two rows of corn, but they didn't come up, so I just threw some extra green beans in. And they're just coming up, so I'll have to weed this out again. This is the weediest side of my garden. Uh, we're right on the edge of the woods, as you can see. And so the, the weeds really creep in from this side. And plus, I made a huge mistake, and I planted some mint on the outside. I planted on the outside of the fence, thinking that it would stay out there and that was a ridiculous thing for me to do because the mint creeps in. So I do have to do a lot of weeding here. And then the other row of corn that didn't come up, I planted some more potatoes. So those are growing right here and I'll have to start hilling those because they're... What I do with my potatoes is I dig a hole. You can see where I dug the hole. And then I put the potato in and cover it just a little. And then as it's growing, I start to hill from there. And it gives it just a little extra space for for growing and I have to do a little less hilling. So it, it works really well. I get a lot of potatoes out of here. And then the next row, this is rutabagas. And I really don't do anything with these. Rutabagas, you could really grow those in the crack of the sidewalk. They're just so hardy. They just grow anywhere. So rutabagas. And then I have one more row of peppers stuck over here because I had extras. So this row has actually been fertilized quite a bit with, um, with rabbit manure. And they were at, this row was actually doing the best. So, um, I don't know. It's shadier on this side. So I did put the rabbit manure here to give it kind of a boost. So we'll keep, be keeping an eye on that too. Various peppers in here. I don't, I don't even know what varieties are in here because they all got mixed up. And then we have the tomatoes. I've got one, two, three, four rows of tomatoes. 
and I was out here the other day and weeded them and pruned them. So I'm doing an experiment out here as well. This side I pruned to single stem and the rest of these I just pruned like I normally would prune, just pruning off the bottom leaves and the suckers. And we're gonna see which ones do best. I pruned these to single stem and as you can see, they're already, they're already bushing back out again. So we're gonna see. You're supposed to get more tomatoes if you prune to single stem. And I am noticing actually that some of these have a lot more blossoms on them than the, the plants that I pruned just regular. So this is, a, this is the year for doing little experiments like that for us. We do have finally our first tomatoes. Where is it? There it is. That's an, an organic heirloom purple tomato. We'll see how that is. And finally, over here is my cucumbers. And a volunteer tomato plant that I just left because it's not hurting anything there. And based on its location, that should be a Roma or an Amish paste tomato. So I do have cucumber plants here. I did not plant pickling cucumbers this year because I did almost 50 quarts of pickles last year. So I really didn't need them this year. So I just planted a nice long salad cucumber. And then I've got zucchini. So here are th I've got three zucchini plants here on the end. And they're finally starting to blossom. Oh yeah, I've got some coming here now, like right there. So I'm not worried about these at all being as it's so late in the year because really zucchini, you just always get more than you need anyway. So I think that's it. So I'll keep you posted on the experiments we're doing. And maybe we'll do another tour in a month or so and you'll be able to see the progress. But especially these two pepper rows, because remember we're going to do that worm casting experiment on these. So there you have it, guys. Have a good day. See you with the next video.